Hello Internet, welcome to another tutorial in Antenna Design and Basics. In today's tutorial, we'll study horn antennas. Please understand horn antennas are, uh, are made from waveguides. A, a rectangular horn antenna would be made from a rectangular waveguide and a conical horn would be made from a circular waveguide. But in this tutorial, we'll focus only on uh, E-plane sectoral horn and H-plane sectoral horns which are the rectangular horn antennas. Now first things first, before we study the horn antennas we must understand that uh, a waveguide, a rectangular waveguide which is a hollow metallic uh, thing like this uh, it cannot be used as an antenna. A rectangular waveguide has an internal resistance of 50 ohms approximately and uh, the resistance or the impedance of air is 377 ohms. There is a huge mismatch of impedances uh, between a rectangular waveguide and air that is why uh, it is not being used as an antenna and the second reason is the diffraction around the edges Now please understand that rectangular waveguide has a width of A and a height of B and the width is always greater than the height in the construction of a rectangular waveguide and uh, so A will always be greater than B in a rectangular waveguide where A is width and B is height. We'll, we'll use this uh, nomenclature throughout this tutorial will refer the width as A and the height as B. And secondly, uh, in a rectangular waveguide, the, the electric field lines, they propagate along the, the surface and the, and the roof. So the field lines are like this, they might just um, go opposite when when there is a negative half cycle but the field lines form uh, magnetic field lines are going to be perpendicular to the electric field lines and they'll be parallel to the surface so they'll they'll be perpendicular to the walls and the electric field lines are going to be perpendicular to the surface and the roof so this thing uh, is needed to be understood uh, clearly so that uh, when we when we make e plane flaring or an h plane flaring so we must not confuse these two things now how do we convert a rectangular waveguide to a a horn we do it with a process known as flaring A flaring is a process of uh, gradually increasing the dimensions of the opening of the waveguide. The waveguide has a set of dimensions A into B. So if we decide to gradually increase A, uh, it will result in one form of antenna. If we gradually um, wish to increase the dimensions B into capital B for example it will result in another form of antenna and if we increase both A and B gradually it will result in a third form of antenna known as pyramidal form <coughs> so I'll try to draw uh, all the three types so in first kind of antenna what we are trying to do is we are We've tried to, we've kept A to be constant, but we've changed B from 
small b to capital B, we have changed the dimensions of b from a smaller dimension to a larger dimension. And the width of this horn remains as it was before. And this type of antenna, because it is facilitating the gradual um, flaring out of the E electric field lines because there, there, is, there is an increase in the uh, height of the waveguide as we move forward and the flare length is uh, carefully selected the amount by which we increase the size of this waveguide is known as flare length and we increase that so that electric field lines uh, are able to match the impedance of the air and um, they are they are sent out to the um, atmosphere in a in a better way so as to propagate better in a directional and um, directional and with with least amount of impedance mismatch and on the other hand if we if we draw something like this um, what we do is we we are changing this small a to capital A so I might not I might not get it. Alright, this looks more or less like a waveguide whose whose width has increased only and if we look at the side view, the side view uh, will look something like this uh, and the front view will look something like this. This was the previous dimension and this is the new dimension and if we look at the front view of this wave uh, on antenna it looks something like this the A remains the same but the B has changed so looking at looking these two horn antennas from the front would yield this view and this type of antenna is facilitating the uh, flaring out of magnetic field lines into the air and this type of uh, antenna is facilitating the electric field lines flaring and this is known as sectoral E plane horn and this is known as sectoral H plane and finally if we decide to increase both the length and the width so we are oh, we have something like this and the front view would look something like this where A will change to capital A and B will change to capital B and this type of antenna is known as pyramidal horn so these are the basic type of horn antennas and uh, we, we design these horn antennas depending upon um, depending upon our own requirement whether we want to flare E or whether we want to flare edge or whether you want to flare both E and H uh, while the most common form of horn antenna is pyramidal horn which is this and if you look at the geometry and the design construction of this antenna the amount by which we increase the length of the antenna from the uh, termination of the waveguide is known as the flare length so this length will be known as the flare length 
and because we we keep the mouth of the horn antenna to be plain so the mouth of the horn antenna is plain so that is why the length over here would be a little longer and this extra length is known as delta and <coughs> now there are going to be two deltas here please understand while flaring out the width will will have additional deltas here when we flare out width this will cause some additional length if I draw a top view here so this would be delta and while while we increase the dimensions to increase the height it will also cause a different delta in the in the vertical uh, direction so uh, we can say that there are two deltas delta E and delta H and this angle is known as the flare angle theta is known as flare angle L is known as the flare length and delta is known as the path difference and there are going to be two deltas delta E and delta H uh, if we look at the uh, the difference of lengths in this section this would be delta E and the difference of length in this section would result in delta H I'm sure uh, you understand this fact that the, the the difference of length in the in the horizontal section would cause delta H to be there and difference of length in the vertical section would cause delta E to be there so uh, by simple mathematics we can we can deduce that L plus delta square is equivalent to L square plus A by 2 square if we if we consider the mouth of the horn to have dimensions A H and a e okay now the increase in the width is denoted by a h and increase in the um, height is denoted by a e and you can calculate both by s s one formula because the l would not change and this would result in uh, and we can neglect delta square bit because this is going to be very uh, small so neglecting this we get or L equal to a squared by 8 delta and there is a limit to which we can increase this flare length we cannot keep on uh, in, keep on going and increasing this L to infinity because there is a limit to delta for E is that delta should be 0.25 lambda or less for E and uh, delta H should be 
0.4 lambda or less so keeping these limits in mind we can we can design our horn antenna we can we can find out the flare length if other things are given and lastly we we can also note down the formula for the directivity which is 4 pi upon lambda square into AE and this area of aperture is nothing but the mouth dimension which is AH into AE as given in this front view of the pyramidal horn so that is how you can you, you can calculate different parameters for a horn antenna uh, lastly we are left with the half power beam width formula half power beam width for E plane horn will be 56 degrees upon A E expressed in lambda this is very important and half power beam width for H will be 67 degrees on A expressed in lambda then the first null beam width are approximately double but the exact formulas are 115 degrees upon A E lambda and personal beam width for H plane sectoral horn will be 172 on AH expressed in lambda and that concludes all the formula and everything that you need to solve in numerical on horn antennas the design and construction of horn antennas are extremely simple you can flare out the height to get an E plane sectoral horn you can flare out the width to get an H plane sectoral horn the rationale behind is also simple because the electric field lines uh, are propagated along the height or uh, along the surface and the roof and the magnetic field lines are propagated along the walls when I say along the walls that means perpendicular to the walls or perpendicular to the surface or uh, roof and um, by keeping these Two, three things in mind uh, we can we can calculate any parameter ranging from directivity to half power beam width to first null beam width to uh, flare length or the flare angle because everything is related in a simple geometrical uh, relationship and I hope this tutorial on horn antennas was of help and if you liked the content of this tutorial please consider subscribing to the channel and thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video you have a great day ahead bye